hey, snackers, need to merge, replace, and delete network changes? Here's Stuart Clark talk management protocol GRPC on the next episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 23 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick and easy way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, or just some cool stuff that we think you might find interesting. And the cool thing that we're talking to you about today is gRPC on iOS XR with our guest and my good friend, Stuart Clark. Stuart, welcome to the show. Do you mind introducing yourself? Hey, thanks, Kareem. Uh, hello, my, my name is Stuart Clark. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome, Stuart. Glad to have you here. Hey, can you uh, can you give us a rundown on what gRPC is and, and why it's important to us? Sure, yeah. So gRPC is a modern open source um, high-performance RPC framework. It can run in any environment. Um, if you're wondering what gRPC is, it's a recursive acronym that stands for um, gRPC Remote uh, Procedure Corp. It's also possible that you might see this as another interpretation with the G standing for general purpose or for Google, but the, both those are possible. And the reason why Google's involved in is Google is the developer and core contributor and maintainer of gRPC. And currently the GPRC project is a program which is um, hosted within the Cloud Native Computer Foundation or CN. CF. That's cool. So um, as I understand it, this is a way to connect uh, directly into, at least in this instance, uh, XR devices, iOS XR devices. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So Cisco iOS XR ships with the YAN files, which define um, the data models that which which they all they support. And so using gRPC um, management protocol, you can programmatically query the device for the list of models it supports to retrieve all of the files on the device. What are some of the use cases that that's around that, or you can how can you leverage that for your day to day? So in the day to day, and and the table which we'll be showing ahead of just in a second here, um, you can do things like get configuration, which country uh, which you can get the configuration of the data, and you can take this model path in a JSON format and input it as an argument as well. You can do a re replacement configuration, so you can replace the um, entire configuration of the device. You can also do a merge of the configuration as well, where you're merging configuration data, and you can also delete configuration data as well. Very cool. So uh, this sounds similar, uh, in, in if you could tell me some of the differences and, and why you might choose gRPC over it, but it sounds similar to NetConf and or RESTConf uh, when connecting to a device. Can you help me understand why I might want to use gRPC over those two interfaces? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So it is really, really similar. And a lot of the verbs that I was mentioning there when we're talking about get and replace and merge and, and those kind of things, really, really similar to what you'd be familiar with in RESTConf or NetConf. The difference here with gRPC is that, um, it, that this protocol itself relies on a kind of really new serialization. Um, and it's called uh, uh, protocol buffers or protobufs. You might see this abbreviated to um, protobufs. And this is an open source binary serialization protocol. Um, gRPC itself provides really flexible and um, efficient um, automation mechanisms um, for serializing structured data like XML, but it's a lot smaller and simpler to use than XML. And in this case here, what we do is we define the um, structure for using buffer message uh, types into dot proto files. Um, and each proto file uh, message is a small logical record of, of information containing a series of named value pairs. In, in, in essence, a lot of people tend to move into uh, gRPC because of the, you know, the smallness of protobufs and the performance as well here. So there's a lot of things to consider when, when you know, choosing which protocol you're going to use for um, serializing, deserializing data. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Stuart, all right, I, I see code and I get excited. So can you walk us through what you got there? What are we doing? What's the library to, to set up? and uh, I'm assuming that you're doing something fun with that. Yeah, absolutely. Buddy. So here, what I'm using here is object, object orientated uh, Python or OOP, which is the paradigm where it uses different um, components of computer program, which are modeled after real world objects um, to be able to build this. You can see this by the, the class I've de defined here on, on line 17. 
And really what we're doing is we're on, on the first, starting from sort of line 17 down here is we're actually connecting to a device in the DevNet sandbox. And this is a um, XR device. The next portion that you see is um, the port, which we're connecting in on, and we're mapping an inbound port of 19399 into the device. And then we've got a 10 second timeout, and then we're passing the username and password um, of the device. Um, as I mentioned before, we're using Yang models. And what you'll see here is, is here on line 22. And I'll just highlight this so we can see it. And this is the Yang model for BGP. So in the demonstration today, we're going to be um, changing and updating BGP on our XR um, sandbox device. And where did I get this um, particular Yang model from? So I can drop straight over and look at the Yang model here, um, which are all hosted in, in the Yang models files. And you'll see this exact same um, Yang model here on line two under the under the namespace. And this is the Yang model um, which I'm I'm going to use. And um, what happens here is we've taken that Yang model. In the first instance, we're actually just calling this and we're using a get to get the configuration here um, for BGP for what's on the device. Getting information is great. The next thing that I want to do is I want to actually um, do some configuration. I'm going to use my first thing that I'll do is, is actually use a, a replace. And this is where it gets interesting. It's because I've taken that Yang model and I've used a power Yang to turn that into a JSON file. And you can see this is right here on line 28. And I'm using this path and I'm opening this JSON file and I'm simply reading this um, file. So if I jump over to the um, to the JSON file, which is right here, this should look very, very similar to the Yang model that we, we saw before, but written in the JSON format. So jump back over to the code, and you will see that we can do the same for a merge, and we can see the same for the delete as well. So we can walk over how you know uh, these are going to go when, when we start running the code and what these are essentially going to do. But what we're going to do is we're going to add BGP, then we're going to modify BGP, and then finally we can we can delete that. And this is all driven by using a Python library called Click. And Click enables us to execute these commands um, from the command line. So I don't have to run separate pieces of code for this, which we'll see when we start running the demo. I can just specify which of the uh, functions within Python I want to actually run um, from, from the command line to to initiate all of this code and, and to get it up and running. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump over into the terminal. So I'm just going to do a quick um, ls, and you'll see that I've cloned and downloaded the code already. And um, so I have it all already on my machine, and I've installed the uh, requirement file. So if I just do a quick cat on requirements, you'll see here that I've got click installed, and that's what we're going to use to use as our arguments to pass the various pieces of code to the device. There's the GRPC CIO, which is developed and owned by Google. And then there is this piece here, which is a um, piece of code, a uh, Python library, which has the two files in it, the protobuf file to interact with XR device. Simple to pip install and, you know, we're, we're, we're up and running. So let's see this in action. And so I have my pieces of code and the piece of code that I'm going to run today is this, this GRPC um, CFG file which was the piece I was, I was sharing on the screen. And so what I can do is I can just simply type in Python and then um, grpc um, cfg. Now click has a built-in helper function. And so I can type help here and it will tell me the command that we wanted to, to run. So the first thing that we want to do is the get command. So I want to see if BGP is configured on my device. And did you see how quickly this came back? Yeah, that was awesome. That was really fast. <laughs> it's pretty fast. Um, we can have, what we can actually do is we could actually, because I'm on um, a Unix machine or a Mac machine, I can actually type in time there as well. And you can see how quickly this returns the data. Now, bearing in mind, you can probably hear from my accent that I'm, I'm based in the UK. So I'm in this, you know, remote area surrounded only by sheep. And the, our data center here is in actually San Jose. So it's thousands of miles away at this stage. And so it's able to get this information back in, you know, sub millisecond time. So. We, we see that BGP isn't running on our device. And what I want to do now is then, I'm just going to replace, use the replace here. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that JSON file with our BGP information in, and it's going to send it to our device. I've got the time on there as well. So you'll see how quickly this interacts. 
So now we've got this replace completed, this which confirms it's done. And if I could, now what I could do is I could log into my device and I could issue some show BGP commands. But, you know, we're net DevOps engineers. We want to do this programmatically. So if I scoot back up again and press the get command, let's see if we've got any BGP. Okay, BGP. Yeah, it's pretty verbose. If we jumped over into the JSON file, you would see that our JSON file looks exactly like this. So the JSON file that we had defined in the SNPs folder is now actually running on our device. And we have our you know, global router ID, we have our network address, our prefix address, everything that we need to set up BGP. Yeah, Stuart, thank you so much for this. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. But before we let you go, we always ask our uh, guests one very special question. And so not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot, um, what superpower would you like to have and why? Uh, well, to be honest, I'd like to have the superpower of lying because then I'd be good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you end around at that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, Snackers, uh, this has been another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thank you for joining us and see you on our, on our next episode.